What's up, ladies and gentlemen? The show has begun. We are live. I'm your host, True Seeker, and you're tuned in to another episode of the True Seeker Podcast. Thank you guys for rocking with me live. There's, we got a bunch of people in the chat room already, and that's always awesome. Makes the show a little bit more interesting. The phone lines are open. If you guys want to utilize that, that's why we do live shows, man, for you guys can call in to ask questions. Uh, you know, if you have any stories, comments, you want to say what's up, say hello to the guests, definitely do that tonight. The number is streaming across the bottom and top of the screen. Also is in all of the description. So give us a call. Let us know what's up. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody who is supporting via Patreon. No doubt, like every month, month to month, you guys help me do what I do. You guys are helping to fund uh, this equipment and to be able to host the podcast on the servers and things like that. Uh, creating more music to give to you guys, to pay the producers, to pay the beat makers. I couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon. And if you want to do that, you get free uh, music when you do that you get unreleased music that nobody else uh, has yet everybody messages me looking for new music and if you want the new music go to patreon that's where that's where it's at anywhere from a dollar a month to a thousand dollars a month whatever you can do every little bit helps so just a big shout out salute to everybody who's who's doing that holding me down over there so without further ado we got an awesome show planned for you guys tonight been trying to make this show happen for a minute uh we've been you know what I'm saying just uh um, I work crazy hours on my job, so I have to get up at 1.30 in the morning to go into work. And then I'm two hours ahead of our guest. So even just that two hours, man, like my, my sleep is few and far between. So just to make it work and make the schedules line up, we did what we had to do. So, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really promote the show a lot, so it's, it's you know, kind of spur of the moment. So thank you guys for holding us down. But without further ado, my guest for this evening... Seven of Hog Mob. What's going on, Seven? What's mobbing, bro? How you living, baby? Oh, man. I'm blessed, brother. Blessed and highly favored of the Lord. How are you, man? <laughs> you already know, man. God is good, bro. We're just chilling. Chilling. Glad uh, we can finally pull this thing off. You know what I'm saying? I know I've been in and out a lot, too. So, uh, yeah, it's good to be here, bro. Man, you're a busy man, dude. You're working on a new album, doing full-time ministry, full-time music. You know, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? You stay on the road. So thank you for finding the time just to hang out with me for a little bit, man. It means a lot. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's good. And and uh, publicly, you know, I want to salute you, bro, for, you know, all the help you've given the ministry as far as like, you know, on the website stuff and everything, man. It's it's, it's really uh helped us in an area where we was lacking for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not really into the computer thing. So it's uh it's been dope, bro. So I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? God says give honor where honor's due. So. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate that, bro. Yeah, man. I appreciate that, dude. That means a lot. Um, speaking of not really knowing much about social media, that's kind of a, a, a true statement. Like a lot of people get on there, they check their numbers. I, I I pretty much get on every day and check my podcast numbers. Every day I look at them, see what we're doing, going up or down. Um, a lot of your videos have gone viral and you said you didn't even know nothing about it because you don't get on there. You don't get on YouTube and check the videos and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Talk a little nah. bit about that, man. Man, I mean, I think it's a blend of a few things. You know, I really, that's not really my personality. You know, I'm more interested in ideal people that I'm in this, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, you know, having access to me, like, all the time. You know what I'm saying? I think that's kind of weird, it personally. You know? It's very so, weird. Um, yeah, so so I never really got into it, you know what I'm saying? And, and I've seen what it's done, like, you know, um, to a lot of people that I've known for a while and, and they were a certain way. But then after exposing themselves to this thing for so long, you know, it's changed their character and it's changed their priorities, you know. And I always I, I want to make sure that I'm always doing this for the right reason, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, that my heart is right before the Lord and that my heart is right towards people. You feel me? And I feel like it's very hard to do that if you get caught up in, in the hype of what you might be for the moment, because that's really all it's going to be is for the moment. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, and I'm not in love with myself. I, I, I know myself too well to fall in love with myself. You know, <laughs> that's real, <man. laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I love the Lord. You dig what I'm saying? Um, I love myself, but as far as, you know, not, not enough to, to be constantly checking my stats, you dig? Um, 
but yeah, man, it, it's been, I think it's been healthy for me. You know what I'm saying? As just as a man and as an artist, um, especially as a minister, I think it has been healthy for me outside. It keeps the ministry to be out among the people as much as possible. And so, you know, that's why Hog Mob kind of has the character and the face that it has and stuff. But God, he, he has blessed a lot of things we released to do well. You know what I'm saying? And um, I try not to look at comments really ever. Um, not for the good or the bad. You know, I think it's dangerous if you constantly focus on the negative things people have to say about you. And I also think it's equally dangerous to sit and, and revel, you know, in uh, the good things people say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I mean, that's one thing about, you know what I'm saying, keeping your hands clean and your heart pure and not doing yeah. it for the numbers. Even though, you know what I'm saying, the numbers are a part of it, it's good that you kind of have other people you know what I'm saying? Delegate it to, to actually keep up with that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where it's not that you have to create the music. See, like on my end, I have to create the music. I have to um, promote it myself, make all the graphic art, do, you know what I'm saying? Do the videos, plan the shoot, do the editing and stuff. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm gifted at it all, but it would be awesome to just be able to work on the music and then have a team or people to actually push it out there, man. So that's awesome that you yeah. can actually just focus on that versus, okay, now we got to focus on the marketing and how are we going to, you know what I'm saying? We shot the best video ever that we've ever done. And now how are people going to see it? You know what I'm saying? You don't have really have to yeah, yeah. worry about that. You just put it out there. The fans share it. It kind of goes viral on its own. You've, you've been putting in the work for years and it kind of just does what it does. Yeah. I kind of, I, I only want, what God has for me, you know, I, I don't, there's not a specific platform or there's not a specific level that I even really want to be at. You know, I, I just want to be where God wants me because I feel like wherever that is, that's where I'm safe. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'll be able to responsibly handle. Um, I think you can definitely hustle your way onto a platform that your shoulders are not broad enough to, 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 to bear. You feel me? And I'm, I'm here for a reason and it ain't my own name. You know, I'm here to represent a name that's greater than my own. So it's very important for me to make sure that wherever I'm at is something I can handle because I don't want to misrepresent. You know what I'm saying? The name of, of Jesus Christ. You feel what I'm saying? So um, I, I really try to, like you said, bro, we, we do our best to make good quality things. And then we kind of just put it out there, bro. And wherever it goes, that's where it goes. You know, we've had videos, I mean, do millions in a matter of a day or two. And then we've had some that we thought would have done great that, you know what I'm saying? Man, might only did a hundred thousand, you know what I'm saying? And so, I mean, I just feel like God takes it where he wants it to go. The people receive it, however they receive it. And it's our job to just keep it coming. You feel me? Doing full-time ministry, man, and kind of taking it day by day, is is that like the model of how you live, of, of not thinking too far ahead and just kind of like seeing where you are today and not getting caught up on, on like autopilot and, okay, I got all these shows lined up. I got I have to meet all these shows versus taking your consciousness, man, your awareness and, and staying in the moment for that day and say, okay, I'm going to give all my energy all my attention to this day to serve who I can and to be there and just to be aware of people and, you know what I'm saying, my situations around me. Is that, is that kind of how you live? Yeah, I try. You know, it's hard. I ain't going to lie, bro. I, I haven't mastered the art of balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, some, I'm, I'm, I can become uh, really obsessive sometimes yeah. when it comes to certain projects. You know, I can sometimes I can dive too deep into something and then neglect responsibilities that I have. And I'm working on, you know, being m more well-rounded when it comes to that. So, you know, um, I know like even recently, like right now, I'm booking a hundred city missions trip. I'm working on three albums, you know, all at the same time. You feel me? I, I still do outreach in my own personal neighborhood. You know, I'm still discipling um, almost about a hundred guys across the country. Um, and then at the same time, trying not to, you know, run myself into the ground. And even if I can't take the whole day off, I try to take at least half a day off sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's important to try to, you know, a, a rest, but then at the same time, too much, the Bible says, you know, a, a little sleep, a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overtake you like a lion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to have that balance where you don't want to work yourself into the grave, but you also got to, you know, pay your bills and make sure that whatever God's put 
you on this earth to do is getting done. So I'm, I'm kind of learning right now, bro, how to like juggle everything a little bit better and to trust in people. And, and you, that's why you got to have a good team around you. You can't just have a team. It has to be a good team. And, and you, you know, for those of you out there that are building a team, you build it according to your weaknesses, not your strengths. You know, wh wherever you're not good at, that's what the areas where you need to find people. But you got to be humble enough to recognize your weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're the type of person who's too prideful to look in the mirror and recognize a flaw, well, then you'll never do anything, you know what I'm saying, to change that about yourself or your situation. And so, you know, I've been really kind of closely examining myself and saying, OK, I'm great at this and I suck at this. So let me find somebody who's great at this and then not be intimidated by their greatness in that area and just give them, you know, the, the free reign to do what God's called them to do in that area and then trust that they'll get it done. And it's been working better. You know, we're a more, much better machine than we used to be now. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I think that that uh, says a lot. And it kind of ties in with where I wanted to go a little bit. Where you're talking about that, you know what I'm saying? You're discipling around 100 guys and many people out there, you know what I'm saying, professing Christians aren't part of a local body. I think I think church culture and all the cliches and stuff is really weird out there right now. It, it's just, it's, it's kind of nasty to me. I've been, I've been in it for so long and the different hierarchies in the church that are built up in the platforms and the celebrity preachers and stuff like that. You have to go into a lot of churches like that. I, I've been there too. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So you have that versus going into the heart of the streets and doing genuine outreach. And so, you have all of these Christians, these people who love God, who aren't part of a body. They see a movement like Hog Mob and they want to belong. I think we all want to be a part of something greater than ourselves. And, and they see Hog Mob as a model of something that what the church is lacking in discipleship, what the church is lacking in just being real and telling me about myself and just being real about issues. A lot of a lot of young people have found that in Hog Mob, man. Talk a little bit about the disconnect there because you still go to, you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, a lot of churches, a lot of big fancy youth groups and stuff, but you're from the heart of the streets, man. And, and that's where you're, you're like trying to go to tour and, and, and you're, you're getting people, you know what I'm saying, where they are. And it's working, yeah. man. And, and and there's, dude, I don't know how many people are part of Hog Mob uh, movement. It, it's, I'm sure it's thousands and thousands of people. I see them every day. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that disconnect, man, and, and like, you know what I'm saying, your vision and where it fits into the local church, you know? Well, first of all, I think the main issue that we're having, bro, is the term church needs to be clearly defined. Yeah. You know, I'm big on words. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, the church is the name of the bride of Christ. So first of all, I'm not going to say nothing about the ch church because that's, I mean, that's w what Christ died for. That's his wife. That's what I'm a part of that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you have the true church and then you have what I call the whore who's in it, who wears a wedding dress and is trying to kind of stand in and, and, and be an imposter in the wedding. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 and parade herself as the bride. Um, and I think we need to, as the body of Christ, you know what I'm saying? We need to do a better job at identifying the bride and identifying the whore when we see them and not give the whore the title of the bride. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So if it's not the fellowship of Jesus Christ, if it's not the fellowship of true followers of Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying? True biblical followers of Jesus Christ, not this made up stuff that people are doing nowadays, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But according to the word of God, you know what I'm saying? Then it doesn't even have the right to to be called the church. And we are we are disrespecting the church by giving it that title. You know what I'm man, saying? So man, I think I'm a lot you. of times when we say, oh, the church ain't doing this and the church ain't doing that. that ain't well, even well, the no, <laughs> it's not the church. Yeah. So we need because the true church is doing all of those. Exactly. Things. You know what I'm saying? It's just that's not the majority of what we see. But the true church has never and will never be the majority of the population. You know what I'm saying? Or even be the majority of those who are professing Christ, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the main thing. First of all, that has to happen is we just have a better um, um, process of defining church. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know for me, I got hurt, you know, um, a, a long time ago, you know, by people who were professing to be the church. 
And um, it caused me to shy away and have a hard heart and a cold shoulder to a lot of things that, um, you know, I probably could have benefited from in terms of Christian fellowship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, oh, this is all fake. So I might as well just stay in the street. So for a long time, I did that. With a, with a deep misunderstanding of what the true church really was. And as the Lord started educating me in, as I took the responsibility that I had to get in the word and actually study for myself some of these things, then I started to realize like, yo, you know what? God actually hates fakeness more than I do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like God has a problem with the same thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This stuff that I can't stand, he can't stand even more. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Which actually made me even embrace his fellowship even more. So, um, you know, I would encourage everybody, man, to 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 fellowship with true believers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to know what a true believer looks like, um, I would encourage you, you know, a great place to go find that is is the book of First John. You know what I'm saying? There's 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 a whole bunch of information in there about the difference between somebody who's professing Christ and is authentic versus somebody who's professing Christ and truly hasn't made the commitment yet. Um, but, you know, uh, um, get involved, man, and, and don't just soak up resources, like actually serve. You know, if, if, if you do go and attend a local church body, man, serve there. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go and listen to a seminar once a week. Like, you know, get involved, see what the needs are in the community and, and challenge your church leadership to meet or, or at least participate in meeting the needs of the local community. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times that's where you'll find out if it's real or if it's fake is are we doing the things that Christ said was true religion? You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and you have a lot of that right now uh, not happening. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There, we're having a lot of meetings. We're doing a lot of preaching, not too much teaching. And then there's a whole lot of people who are saying they have a heart for something. But when it comes down to it, they really don't participate in it ever. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, we just as a ministry, man, we try to do what we see Jesus do. We try to do it for the reason we see Jesus doing it for, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that we're not perfect, but he was perfect for us. So we're able to move forward, bro, in boldness and in faith because of, 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 of uh, what the spirit is doing to us and through us. And um, we, I'm definitely uh, trying to provide people with a spiritual family that I didn't necessarily have when I first came here. That's my biggest thing. I want to be the brother I never had and the father, you know what I'm saying, that, that um, the spiritual father that um, I wasn't really connected to, you know what I'm saying, for other people. Mm -hmm. Definitely, man. I agree with that 100%, 1,000%. Yeah. Uh, church isn't some place that we go to. It's not a building that we go to. It's who we are, you know what I'm saying? Whenever we come together, we are part of the body. We represent, we are the manifestation of Christ on the face of the earth whenever we come together yeah. as, a, as a people. And, and and that's where the power is, understanding the body. And it, it's it's huge, man. And I wanted to kind of talk also about, I seen an interview you did um, probably a year or two ago with uh, um, during South by Southwest. And I think it was one of your first times actually going out there and getting some type of media coverage. And I don't mean any offense when I say this, but now that the whole 116 and Lecrae thing has kind of died down a lot, I see some of the, I'm not going to name any names, but, but like, uh, people with blogs and, and websites looking for the next big thing to kind of put out there. Um, you guys were able to get some media coverage during that. And for you, dude, you've been putting in work for a very long time. When I came in to, to doing gospel music years and years ago, you were there. You were there and established. But your name had never been mentioned in these in these media outlets. And now you're starting to get a little bit of coverage. And you said that like almost your name was kind of like blacklisted from some of these circles. I don't know if if, if, if because mm -hmm. you were a little bit too street, a little bit too hood or, or you know what I'm saying, what it was or the tattoos, what it, whatever the case was. Talk a little bit about that divide and how now, instead of pushing you away, some of these people are like asking you to come and do interviews and, and you know, they want to know your take on things, you know? Well, um, I think... I think it's a combination of a few things. Um, I know myself as a man and as a man of God, I've definitely matured over the years. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I used to be probably a lot harder uh, of a pill to swallow for most people than I am at this point, you know, um, and I'm going to just be honest. I was involved in some things early on, still caught up, you know, um, in, in, 
and a lot of struggles, you know, that that um, a lot of people were like, yeah, you know, let, let, let's be careful with this dude. Yeah, because, you know, and, and I respect that. You know what I'm saying? I do. I respect that. I actually think to a degree we need to have more of that, you know, as far as like, let's not be so quick to give the new hot dude a platform. Yeah. And let's actually spend some time to get to know him and pour into this brother yeah. and make sure that whatever roots he has are deep in Christ. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we're all going to make mistakes. I mean, th the Bible even says we got to make room for each other's errors and room for each other's weaknesses. So that's not, you know, um, the, the world and the church make mistakes. The difference between them is, is how they manage those mistakes and, and how they respond to the conviction you know what I'm saying? That comes or the rebuke that comes when those mistakes are brought to the light. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the world will run from God or, or, or hate God more. You know what I'm saying? Because he's confronting things that he's not pleased with. Um, the children of God, you know, we, we embrace the Lord, we embrace the correction and we desire, you know what I'm saying? To please our father. So um, I think also the, the gospel rap, community and culture has definitely become more mature itself in terms of having a greater understanding that look this carbon copy and and you know these these ideas that y'all had about what true ministry looked like or true christianity looked like you know they're not really panning out the way y'all thought that they would you know what i'm saying yeah. so now you're starting to see and then some of the dudes that you have been you know not you personally but just you know the the, the christian community for a long time was kind of treating bad for a while they're the ones that are been faithful over still the years here. and they're still the ones here. that are still boldly professing christ and all of these things so i think a lot of people are now turning around and, and especially now that the streets are kind of spilling into the suburbs yeah. you know the issues in the streets are spilling into the suburbs you know a lot of the church community were not from the streets you know what i'm saying so so now that these problems are are coming to where they dwell and where they're at and they're affecting their people, now it's like, yo, we need to get somebody who can talk to the streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nobody really cared about street ministry until the streets started affecting everything. I mean, culture in and of itself, you know what I'm saying, is being affected by the negative aspect of, of, of the street life. So um, I think now a lot of people are beginning to appreciate brothers like myself you know what I'm saying? Who who specifically target places where most people don't want to go because they're actually seeing like, yo, somebody's got to do it. And if I'm not willing to personally go, I certainly should support those that are, you know, so I appreciate that. I think we have a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we've come a long way. I mean, I've been doing this 17 years, man, and, and, and it's it's come a long way. So, you know, I'm grateful to God for what, what where it's at right now. I had another artist on here several months back, and I'm, I'm assuming it's just, you know, maybe he was a baby Christian or whatever, but he does a lot of street ministry, and we were talking about testimonies and what God was doing. And so I kind of set up a question um, mm -hmm. for, for him to give a testimony, and this is what I said, and I'm going to ask you. So I, I pretty much asked him, like, has he seen the power of God out in the streets? Has he seen people come to repentance? And um, what I've seen personally, and this is I, when I asked this question, I thought I was going to have somebody just bear witness with me. I asked him, has he seen people who were demon possessed, filled with evil spirits on on drugs? I've been around people who can't look you in the face face. They can't have a conversation with you because there's voices in there. There's stuff going mm -hmm. around. Their, their mind is fuzzy. They've been up for days. They get filled with the power of God, filled with the Holy Ghost. God touches them, changes their life. They give their life to Christ. He touches them and they're completely transformed in an instant. Like I've seen yeah. that happen at churches. I've seen it happen in the streets. When I asked this yeah. brother that he had no idea. He didn't even believe in that. It blew my mind. Uh -huh. He didn't believe in it and he's doing ministry. I want to ask you the same question. Have you mm -hmm. seen this fruit? Absolutely. Um, I think I think sometimes what happens is because um, it happened to me when I first came in, I was I was very um, uneducated, you know, if you will, ignorant, you know, ignorant doesn't mean stupid. It just means you lack information. You know what I'm saying? I was I was ignorant towards certain things of the spirit. Um, and so I actually early on had seen things that I didn't know that that's what I was seeing at the time. So if you had asked me this, maybe, you know, when I first got started, 
I would have been like, eh, you know, maybe not too much, <laughs> even though it was happening. But I was I didn't recognize what I was seeing when it was happening. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I also am a firm believer that, you know, uh, uh, the more time you spend in the spirit and, 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 and walking with the spirit of God, you know what I'm saying? And the more mature you get in your relationship with the spirit, the more uh, you will kind of almost see those manifestations of opposition. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I really believe that because you're more of a threat to the spiritual world. You know what I'm saying? So there will be more spiritual opposition uh, that comes from that. I've seen all kinds of stuff, man. I mean, you know, demon possessed people, bro. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, we've seen even healings like miraculous healings. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Pe- blind people, deaf people can hear, uh, lame people walking. Like we've actually seen that with our own eyes. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, even me, I got changed in an instant. Yeah. So the first time I ever saw it happen was in my own life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I had a miraculous transformation, you know, with, with, with the Lord. Um, and obviously, you know, more more change over time. But but in the moment, bro, I was never the same. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, we, we, we do see a lot of that. Those are the things that I look forward to encountering when I go out. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not the stages. It's just not the lights. It's I look forward to seeing. I get excited like, dang, Lord, I wonder what you're going to do this time. Yeah. Because I know it's going to be wild and it's always something new because the situation's always different mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying I, and and we're not out here trying to produce any specific result you know the bible says one man plants one man waters but it's god who brings the increase so i don't even feel like that part of the game is my responsibility my responsibility is to be obedient to the voice of the lord when it speaks you know what i'm saying um and also to live a life that um accurately reflects the gospel that i preach you know, so anything after that, bro, that's really um, between the individual, their faith in God. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, I think I think the scriptures are plain, man, when it says that, you know, these signs shall follow them that believe that if you believe and, and you know I'm saying you're walking in that, that these signs, these manifestations that happen to the disciples, to Jesus, like they're going to they're going to follow you, too. If you if you believe that gospel and you're walking in it and you just go, go into all the world. That's what he said. Go. You're doing that, and you know what I'm saying. Hats off to the people, even the people who aren't real deep or like well trained in the scriptures or even in experience. You know, you got to get your feet wet sometime. Yeah. But I think one of the big problems is, and it kind of goes back to what you said a while ago about you know getting in a situation or being a part of a ministry or dealing with principalities in the <laughs> spirit realm, and you don't know what you're dealing with, right? Um, people who get born again and they have Mm -hmm. giftings they're a good rapper they play the keyboard well they're a great singer and then the Mm -hmm. churches will grab them and throw them up on a platform instantly oh yeah okay okay, you can sing okay we need you you're gonna lead worship they don't know nothing about worship you know i need you to learn these songs sing them sunday morning and go and they don't know if this person is dealing with some type of um, spirits in their own life, addiction. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what's going on. Talk a little bit about yeah. that because when you see those people fall or their faults come out in, in, into the wash, the churches will like just drop them. Oh, you sinned. You're done. Get off the platform. It's like, yeah. what? And like it, it, it sets it's, up a bro, lot of people to is. fall, man. You know, you know what it is, man? I, I consider it child abuse. Yeah. You know, it's a form of child abuse, man. Here you have a spiritual child. Um, It's no different. You know, I don't know if you, you know, if you're a father or not, but, um, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a father, bro. Like if I were to give my son who's five years old keys to my car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then when he crashes my car, whoop him and dis not even just whoop him, but disown him for it. If, if the world, if the world were to see me do that, the world would say I was a terrible father. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even, even the wicked would say that was wrong of me to ever put him, uh, you know, in that situation to fail and then to treat him so heartlessly once he does it. You see what I'm saying? And and even the word of God in the book of First Timothy, it's very specific about the fact that you do not put a platform under a new convert because it will destroy him. You know what I'm saying? It will. It's not a matter of, of if, it's just a matter of when. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, I mean, come on, bro. Even 
we've seen what this has done to even seasoned people in the faith. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all men has pride, which is why all men commit sin. You know what I'm saying? From sin is uh, pride is at the root of every sin. You see what I'm saying? Because we're exalting our own desire above the will of the father in any given moment. So, um, so for you to think, spend a lot, of time, which is what these platforms do, which is what checking your social media stats, that's all you're doing. You're constantly feeding your pride. If you think that whatever you're feeding is not at some point going to grow stronger than whatever it is you're not feeding, which is your humility, you know what I'm saying? You, you're a fool. You feel me? So I think, you know, for, for, for us, we have to do a better job as, as the body of Christ with holding people accountable to discipling people as they're coming into this. I mean, and, and to be real, bro, I don't know what that process necessarily would look like. I don't have all the answers. I made a commitment to do my part in my personal life with when I meet young brothers and sisters, especially ones with talent who I, I know are on their way, they're going to be here regardless, you know, whether they rock with me or not, this is a space that they're in. I definitely try to make sure that I pour into these brothers and pour into these sisters and make sure, man, that they doing this for the right reasons, take them on missions trips and, and instead of just music tours and and make sure that their mind is on ministry and so making sure that they're ending of the gospel of jesus christ because first of all have you even truly received it if you don't know it how you know how how is that possible um but also you sure can't go around teaching something that you yourself ha haven't received you know i love how paul said it like yo we're not out here preaching cleverly devised myths yeah. you know what i'm saying we we, we, we preach to you something that we ourselves have already received. And then you see these brothers go on to not just live for it, but actually die for it as well. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we, um, like what you're doing right now, you know, is a part of that process. What I'm doing is a part of that process. We just need more of this. You know what I'm saying? Taking this next generation under our wing and being the father to the fatherless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> I think it has something to do with what Paul said. Um, power and demonstration, not with enticing words or these, you know what I'm saying, the wisdom of words or elegant words, but with power and, and demonstration. I like the phrase, I can show you better than I can tell you. You know what I'm saying? Right up. Um, so we do have a lot of people in ministry and, and different theologies are different, man. And I, I, I personally think it, it kind of, it kind of hinders people's ministry, but you have, you have these people who are just like, um, they just want a decision. Who wants to follow yeah. Jesus? Raise your hand if you'll follow Jesus. And that's it. Okay, we got to convert. You're a convert. You, okay, we're going to start studying our Bible and learning it. I believe in the baptism of fire, man. I believe that Christ, you know what I'm saying, talked about this other baptism, you know what I'm saying, the baptism into our death or, you know what I'm saying, the baptism of water, but this other baptism of 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 the Holy Spirit and fire, man. And I think that for us to see true true ministry, whether we're a part of a local body of Christ or we're in, in the in the streets doing it, whatever. I think we need that baptism of fire, man. Are you are you seeing that in your ministry as well? Is there like like people who are who are doing that as well, who are coming to faith and then having an encounter with the living God versus an, yeah. a decision? I think I think it it, it it over yeah it happens over a process of time. You know what I'm saying? I mean the before the apostles experienced that baptism they are they were they had been walking with jesus getting under the, the teachings of christ they they because that really changed everything for me and even there was certain addictions and struggles that i had my whole life mm -hmm. that didn't even stop and or i'd never really gained any any ground with until i i, I got baptized with the holy spirit you feel what i'm saying um but even before that, like, you know, I was pursuing God and, and I, I was seeking, you know what I'm saying, um, to follow the teachings of Christ and stuff. And I think that we just have to be careful that we um, we don't put like a cookie cutter mold on everybody and say, oh, well, because it happened for me in two weeks. If it doesn't happen for you in two weeks, your conversion wasn't genuine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely do agree with you in terms of that. At some point, it will happen if you tr truly um, you know what I'm saying? Receive Christ. Um, and, and I believe that's where, why discipleship, the discipleship process is so important is because it's within that discipleship process that we see a person kind of receive that. 
You know what I'm saying? So I do agree with you that certain people's uh, theologies might hinder them in in these areas and stuff like that. And and I believe that God is, he's a master homie at laying to waste bad theology. You know what I'm saying? Um, And he's also the one that permits it at times, you know, to exist. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, people have certain ideas about certain things because there are certain things that God has chosen to keep hidden for a time in a season that are yet to be revealed. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that, like you said, bro, and, and I try to do the same thing. We're out here to demonstrate God. Mm-hmm. We ain't here just to talk about him. You know what I'm saying? We're out here to demonstrate him, not not just in, in teaching uh, of the word, but also in power. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Also in conviction, um, but also in love and the power of love. You know what I'm saying? Because love is is so miscommunicated and it's been so perverted as far as the image of what you think when you when you think of love. It's this soft, timid kind of punk thing when really, bro, true love is one of the most aggressive and and, and masculine. You know what I'm saying? Things that you can walk in. And um, I believe that the Lord, that's one thing that the Lord is really bringing back. Um, to the forefront right now, especially in the body of Christ, mm-hmm. is the the, the, um, the war mentality that comes with a man who's walking in love. You know what I'm saying? The warrior's mind. Yeah. I've, I've seen that time and time again with the difference between, and, th- and there was a term that came to my um, mind earlier. I was just thinking about this. I don't know if I'm going to do a video on it or not, but mm-hmm. a term between um, my church brothers and my brothers in Christ. You know how, like, when you go to ch- you go yeah, to yeah. you go to a church, everybody's your brother. Hey, I love you, brother. Mm-hmm. You sh- shake hands, you dap it up, whatever. And you know, you go to the same church and you always shake that same person's hand. It's like part of the routine. But then, like, as a baby Christian, you kind of think that that's that's your church family. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are my brothers in Christ. But there are people there who will stick with you closer than a brother. Um, mm-hmm. cause there, there's this whole dichotomy of like, if I was to tell some of those people or the, even the pastor, you know what I'm saying? Tell them some stuff that goes on in my head, thoughts that I've, I've had, uh, struggles I've had. A lot of them, they'll cut the cord. Look, we got to get rid of this dude. This dude is shot out. This dude is crazy. Right. Um, yeah. but there's that fake, you know, and then, and then, you know, whenever you show that vulnerable side of you, then they drop you and they cut you loose and, or your yeah. theologies, or, or, or you know what I'm saying? Even the theology, oh, you believe in that? Oh, we can't deal with you. Whatever the case is, I've seen it many a times. Um, but then on the other side, when you find the true brothers in Christ, those dudes who are down to get into the nitty gritty with you and they don't give a damn what you tell them. They're your, mm-hmm. they're your family. Like, I don't, man, I, I've had phone calls with dudes and I've told, I've told people stuff thinking that this would be the last phone call I've had with them. And they're down with me and they're like, you know what, man, we're going to pray together. I got you, whatever the case is. And man, it's, it, it's totally, it's a night and day thing versus like the, the, the cookie cutter fake family, which, but when you're in it, you kind of think that those are your, your, your people, yeah. Um, yeah. man. But there's so much more there for anybody who's listening, man, who, you feel alone in, in, in these situations, man. Just know that there's people out there who care about you, who won't disown you because you're different, because you believe something different or, or you've experienced something, man. Just know that. Love- me, yeah. I, I, and that needs to be said, man, for anybody out there, let me tell you something. And this is coming from somebody who looked for fellowship and community. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I was a California gang member, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and active one, that and and I've I've laid my life on the line. You know what I'm saying? I, many times I, I was willing to give my life and take life. You know what I'm saying for the fellowship uh, that, that I was involved in the prefer the perversion of fellowship. You know what I'm saying that these street gangs you know offer. And um, let me tell you guys something, man. For, as as somebody who's over here on this side and has been transformed by the love and the blood of Christ, man, and and is now actively involved in not just. Um, being a, a member of the uh, of the true church, the true body of Christ, but actually actively involved in, in seeing its expansion. Yo, they, they, what you looking for in terms of true fellowship is here. You know what I'm saying? In the true version of the church. You feel me? It's here. You know, um, the, the, it don't get no realer. The love don't get no realer than over here. Like you said, bro, I got I got brothers that I know that that um, go to church. And then I got my brothers in Christ and my <laughs> yeah. brothers in Christ told me, 
you know, we ride with each other to the death yeah. and we, you know, we have this, I have this thing with my brothers. As long as you down with Christ, I'm down with you. You feel me? They're, 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 that's the only thing that will cause me to break fellowship with a person because Christ is my first love. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you stand against him, you stand, you know, I got to stand against you. Mm -hmm. But as long as you rocking with him, it doesn't matter what you've done because we've all done something. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's what sin is what we have in common. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so is it in the areas of your mistakes? You know, I might not be able to mistakes, bro, because I've messed up too. You feel me? So, um, you know, we're here to help each other um, pursue Christ together. You know, I need the accountability. I need the fellowship just as much as my brothers do. And we really love each other from that place, man. And we try to help each other. We we get involved. You know, your wife is my sister. You know, your, your kids is my nieces and my nephews, man. You know what I'm saying? And so we really hold each other accountable to that level. Imagine where our culture and our society would be. You know what I'm saying? If we really had that out here. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't, oh, I'm rocking with you, whether you're right or whether you're wrong. It's like, no, bro, I'm rocking with what's right. And if you're wrong, then I'm going to challenge you on that. And that needs to stop if you're going to remain in fellowship with us. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's necessary, homie. And that's what you see in the original church. But a lot of that's being lost now. And, and you have it to where love has become so perverted that because people love men more than they love God. Yeah. And the Bible says that, you know, mm -hmm. people will become lovers of themselves. You know what I'm saying? And so now it's like if you challenge somebody um, to 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 walk more godly, somehow I'm not loving this person. Like, nah, bro, I, it's because I love you, homie. I got to challenge you in this area because I don't want to see you destroyed. And I sure don't want to see you um, doing any harm to the body of Christ as well because of your reckless or selfish actions. You know what I'm saying? But I also, um, you know, have to hold myself to the same standard. So, you know, um, man, I, I encourage people, man, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good and taste and see that the church is good. You know what I'm saying? But don't come into this thing like I did. Don't come into this thing expecting perfection. You know what I'm saying? Christ is perfect. God is perfect. But his people be messing up sometimes. You feel me? Um, but I mean, let's keep it real, bro. We, we didn't like a gang of stuff was fake and, and or or we experienced a lot of people making a lot of mistakes in a lot of areas of our life that we still run to. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell my homies in the street all the time, like, they're like, oh, I ain't trying to go to church. It's, it, it, it's fake there. Like, what you mean, bro? You in the street all the time and half these dudes just tell it. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't got no problem with fake. You got a problem with God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, um, you know, um, you know, I, I just and, and a lot of it is 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 too. It's it's from a um, a lot of prejudices and and things. It's kind of like people are told that it's a certain way over here, but they haven't really ever experienced this for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and I think especially with our fellowship, a lot of brothers come into it and they're like, "Yo, bro, I never knew there was nothing like this." You know what I'm saying? Like, I, if I had known this, I would have came a long time ago. Yeah. And that's the thing we just trying to let people know, man, is is when you meet a true fellowship of believers, man, it's nothing like it. It's going to challenge you. But but we here for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and God does the work, man. He, he, he'll he produce in you the changes that he wants to see. Our job is just to pursue him. You feel me? Yeah. I totally agree. hundred percent, man. It's like the camaraderie is there and it, it may not be a big group of people. It may not be the big hog mob numbers, hundreds and thousands of people who are down the ride. It may just be two or three people, man, who you Bro, can... we don't, we don't got, we don't got thousands of people down the ride. Let me tell you, hog mob. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, it's, I'm going to keep it real. And this is no disrespect okay. to anybody who supports our ministry, but, but this is the reality, right? Even Christ. He had three to 5,000 people following him around everywhere he went at times, you know, but at the end of the day, okay, he had his 12 yeah, and then he had his three. But at the end of the day, bro, it was only one dude that was with him when he was hanging on that cross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was nobody in that tomb with him. You feel me? Mm. <laughs> like, so, uh, you know, you, it, it's kind of, I look, I liken it to like a sports team. You know, you got the owners, you got the players, and then you got fans, 
you know, and the fans are just as important to the to the organization because they're the ones that that support it and they get out there and 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 they 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 they, they financially support the movement. You feel me? They spread the word and they do all of these things, so they're a part of the organization. But then you got people who actually bleed. You know what I'm saying for it every Sunday, every Thursday night. You know what I'm saying? And and, and those are the brothers that you might see me rocking with more is the brother because we really out here in the field. But then when it comes time to make executive decisions, all the players don't get to come into that office. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So sure. it, your, your numbers, the numbers don't matter because at the end of the day, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, at the end of his life, he only had 120 people rock with him. So even by worldly standards, the world, and even by most church standards, they would look at Christ's numbers and say he was a failure in ministry. But those 120 people who, like you said, went on to be baptized in fire because of the work they put in brought the Roman Empire to its knees yeah. for a season. You feel me? So it's not about how many people you got rocking with you. It's about the authenticity of the people you got rocking with you, the spirit of the people that you got rocking with you. You know what I'm saying? And and um, that's what God can can use. You know, so I'm not. That's why I'm not one for the numbers, bro. I, I'll, I'll take quality over quantity any day, bro. Definitely. Especially when it comes to fellowship. You know. Definitely, definitely. Um, let's talk a little bit about the the whole system that's built upon it at, you know, that we call church. It's not church. So I think we discussed that at the beginning, but there's a system in place, right? And it's a, it's a business as well. And, and, and most of them are ran as a business. And I've seen in, in my own life and in many other young people who, who are raised up to, I've seen many young people uh, give their life to the Lord. God changed them in an instant, fill them with his fire and they have an encounter with God and then they start going to a church and people are coming to them for prayer because when they pray, things happen. Um, bondages are broken. People are, are, are filled with that same fire and that same presence. It, it just radiates off of that person because they spend time with the father. And you can tell you'll go to these different churches and, and there's those people who, you know, spend intimate time with yeah. Jesus. And a lot of times these are young people. And I've seen many cases that, you know, these people end up being a threat to that system where we have mm -hmm. the system built that the pastor has the answers, that the pastor is the one who lays on the hands or, or, you know, we may give you permission at the altar call to lay on hands or whatever, but it starts like deviating the, the, the power starts being taken away from the, the pastor a little bit or something. Right. And that person becomes a threat mm -hmm. to that system or to that business. And that person begins to have a target on their back. That young person who would just come to the Lord, filled with the fire of God, and they don't know anything. They're just, they just love Jesus, man. And they have a target on their back simply because they now possess what the pastor used to have, man. What, what kind and there's tons of people like that. Ton, I've, I get mm -hmm. messages and I'm sure you do too, where these, these people are out there and then they, you know, they don't know what to do. They, they're shunned. They're, they, you know, there's a new term that I, that I found out. Um, I called it excommunication, but we don't really, you know, practice that term too much anymore. Right. Oh yeah. He was yeah. excommunicated. We, the Christian yeah. church really don't deal with that, but there's a new term, a blog I found, they call it ghosting where mm -hmm. you just, they just break fellowship. They don't even tell you. They just quit yeah. calling you. They quit talking to you. They talk behind your back. And there's a term called ghosting, and that's what they're calling it now. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, man. Like, have you seen, I'm sure you've seen that in your own life, going into these these structures, man. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about being fair. You know, I, I've seen it. Uh. I've seen it happen and I've also been embraced and I've had people pour into me and want to see that gift um, you know what I'm saying? Even matured. So, yeah. you know, and, and by church people in churches and leadership, I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've had, I've had great experiences um, dealing with people who profess Christ and I've had terrible experiences. You know what I'm saying? So let, I just want to be fair to the mm -hmm. other side of things too, yeah. but absolutely homie. I've, I've been shunned, excommunicated and ghosted. <laughs> you <know what> I'm <laughs> um, you know what, man, I think at this point, um, how could I, like, 
how do I expect to look like Christ yet not get treated how he get treated? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, bro, what's helped me deal with a lot of these things is studying the life of Christ. Amen. Because yeah. when I'm able to study the life of Christ and see what he went through, and then also study a lot of the New Testament where it talks about, yo, what he went through is guaranteed to you. Yeah. Like, you're going to suffer these things. You're going to go through these things if you're truly following him. If you, Because the world's relationship with Jesus has never changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's not like they're cool with him now. You feel yeah. me? So as much <laughs> what they did to him before, they're going to do to anything that reminds him now. And, you know, I, I have like a little jokeable thing that I say, but it's like, you know, the world is like a, a ratchet baby mama. You feel me? She's going to um, she's going to abuse us because we look like our father. Oh, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. She has a bad relationship with our father man. and she's going to abuse his children because they remind her of him. You yeah. feel me? Um, and so these are things I think I think what needs to happen more is there needs to be a greater level of education to new converts about what to expect in terms of the persecution that is not only guaranteed to you, but God actually said that it is his will that we suffer these things yeah. because these things perfect us yeah. into the image of Christ. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We're supposed to look like Christ. How do you look like Christ if you've never been persecuted and had to love your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you. How can you ever exemplify that if nobody's ever persecuted you or despitefully used you? Yeah. You feel me? So I think that when you have a, a, a mature understanding of the purpose of these things, it helps you to be able to go through them in a righteous fashion and not become church hurt and bitter and angry and F the church. And now I'm not dealing with that no more. It's like, no, bro. Yeah. You, you definitely probably need to find you a, a more healthy fellowship. You know what I'm saying? But you don't allow this to affect your heart because ultimately that's what the enemy is after. He's after your heart because if he can harden your heart, he's already destroyed your witness and your ministry is soon to follow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wish that, when we're baby Christians, even now, maybe maybe we need to, you know, create this. But I, I wish that uh, those Bible promise books that we used to get, <laughs> I used mm -hmm. to have, I used to keep them in my back pocket and I pull it out and you just go to the situation of what you're dealing with and there's scriptures on it and there's promises of God. You know what I'm saying? That, they, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be more than a conqueror, that you're the head and not the tail, all these different situations. But I wish there was a, a portion that would tell you about the promises of persecution like that is promise. Those are the promises of God. You will. But you be know what? Persecuted. Even a scripture like look, look. Even a scripture like, okay, you're more than a conqueror. You, you know what it reminds me of? It's when when a brother gets married, and they say, you know, for better or worse, for richer for poor. You know what I'm saying? In sickness or health. Well, all you hear as a as a carnal man, you know, we hear for better, for rich, and in health. Yeah. Like we don't hear the, uh, it's almost like those things don't even really register to us. And we agree to it. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. But we're not thinking about the worst. We're not thinking about the poor. We're not thinking about the moments of sickness that we're going to have to endure with this person. We're just thinking about the benefits. So when you hear a scripture that says, yo, you're more than a conqueror, we only hear the good side of that scripture. But what we're not realizing is why would God have to feel the need to tell us that? Yeah. And remind us of the fact that we're more than conquerors unless we were going to be in a war. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Those are scriptures about warfare. You know, you're the head and not the tail. Well, why would God need to tell me that unless I got a bunch of people who are out here probably going to be trying to convince me that I'm the tail? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I mean when I say I don't I don't think that it's that there's not a lot of scriptures dealing with it. Cause there's plenty. I think that there is definitely a lack of education, but yeah. I think even in our own perspective, when we look at scripture, we have a tendency not to see it for what it's really trying to say, because we came into this with our own misconception about what Christianity was supposed to look like. I know I did. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know necessarily that I was signing up for war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yes, the battle in eternity has already been won, but I have been given a call to duty and an assignment and a deployment that I have to be faithful to and, and, and walk out. And I still have to fulfill, you know what I'm saying? The mission that God has put me on um, in this space and in time, you know what I'm saying? So um, 
Definitely, bro. I think that would be a great topic even for your show. You know, I see you obviously have a passion for these things. You know what I'm saying? Um, might want to put together a whole study on just how all the scriptures, you know what I'm saying, that promise the, the, the believer not only persecution, but also the, the greater promises that God will see us through it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we got to hold on to. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's the whole thing, too, man. But like whenever you're going through the persecution or you're going through the doubt and the um, dark night of the soul and all of these questions and stuff, and you've been being treated like uh, you know, a second class citizen and you don't belong and nothing's lining up. Like when we're going through it, we get upset. We we're asking God to take us out of it, but it's in all of those, those moments, man, those, those dark places that we've been through, um, w whether we're, you know, we're, we're spiritually being attacked by principalities and demons and stuff. It's in those moments that we're taught, man. We're, we're, we're taught about the darkness. And unless we've well, been th through those, th those dark times, we don't have a contrast for the glory of God and, and for yeah. Christ's work in our lives. Like we don't have nothing to contrast mm -hmm. it against. So now I'm thankful and I wouldn't take back none of it. And when it happens now that I'm more seasoned, I can see the hand of God and what he's doing in my life. And I know how to respond to the testing yeah. and I see what he's trying to put in me. And, and it's, and, and that's where a character is built in, in the life of every believer. That's scriptural. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Testing perseverance. And I, I've even heard it being said on, on some other podcasts and stuff. They're talking about how people who were just kind of like given life on a golden spoon or, you know what I'm saying, a silver spoon. And they've got everything handed to them. And, and they're, they're, they're kind of jerks, man. They don't really value anything. Everything's given to them. They never had to work for anything. But the interesting people, the, the people who are, are funny, the people who have a story to tell, the, the people who, who are just, you know what I'm saying, more fun to be around are the people who, who have had a shitty upbringing, Who've had the dysfunctional yeah, yeah. home, the parents fighting, yeah. they ran away. Like all, mm -hmm. they have these stories. It produces in them something that makes them seem like better friends. Somebody who's just there, man. And this is even coming from the secular world where, they, where they're talking about that. So the, the um, resistance applies in every aspect of our lives. When you find that resistance, you look at everybody in the Bible, what happened to them, it's going to happen to you. But it's a beautiful thing because from that resistance, they were able, once the, once it broke, they were able to spring forth and go into the calling that God had for their life to go into the promised land, to defeat their giants and, and all of this, man. So the resistance is beautiful. It really is. The darkness that we that we go through, I'm telling you, man, see what God is trying to teach you in these seasons, man. We got to learn the lessons. Yeah, you know, the, the, the type of people who don't appreciate resistance are the type of people who are looking for comfort. True. Um, but the people who appreciate resistance are the people who are looking for growth. Um, I'll use an example like me, right? I'm, I'm on my way. As soon as we get off here, I'm going to go meet the homies at the gym. Now, all I'm going to meet when I get to the gym is a bunch of resistance. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? But I'm looking forward to it. Universal I plan law. my day around. It's yeah, law. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because I understand the purpose of this resistance and I'm looking forward to the, to, there's a greater um, glory that comes from after I persevere through the resistance is that I get stronger. You dig what I'm saying? And yeah. so that's the thing, even spiritually, homie, like more so, yeah. like, the Bible says, you know, OK, uh, it, it's, it does a little profit for you to, you know, exercise your body. But how much more to exercise your spirit? You feel what I'm saying? And so yep. I um, I feel like the problem is, is that most of us are complacent in where we're at in Christ. So we now we look at it as if we are not supposed to go through nothing else. Like we like, OK, look, man, <laughs> I already, I already I've, went through I've it. Arrived, yeah, I've arrived at what I have deemed from myself to be a good level. Yeah. But the Bible says that even if you're producing good fruit, God himself is going to prune you so that you can produce more. Yeah. So even though you've grown comfortable where you're at, God is not satisfied with where you're at. You feel That's what I'm true. saying? And so, and if, and if, and if doing the will of your father is your true priority, which for every true believer, that's what it should be. Then homie, you're going to look forward to these opportunities that you have to walk in the gospel that you have, that you claim you really about. You feel me? Because an offense ain't really nothing to a person who's already got forgiveness on their heart. You know, the, the word forgiveness means to forgive. It's to give beforehand. 
So I'm, I'm, that's supposed to already be there, just like what Christ has for me. He died 2,000 years ago for things that I'm still yet to do. You feel me? So when I do them, it's not that God has to find it in his heart to forgive me. No, I fall into the arms. I fall into the arms of forgiveness that were already before laid before me before I ever even made that mistake. And that's what we have to have for one another, bro. That's you know what not, I'm saying? It's yeah. not that I got to find forgiveness for, you know, I already had it in place. You're just creating a scenario in which I get to activate the forgiveness that I already had for you. You feel what I'm saying? So I feel like that's where we need to just get, but it takes, you know, you, we, you only get these things things from the spirit of God, man. Yeah. So we just got to keep pursuing the spirit, bro. I, I, I do have to go here pretty soon, bro. So, um, I yeah, don't know, man. you know, how yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely go ahead and wrap it up, man. But just to kind of tee off on that, um, that's why the scripture says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according mm -hmm. to the flesh, but after the spirit. So, you know what I'm saying? Whenever you were wayward, you had nothing to fall upon when, whenever you yeah. needed, when you needed forgiveness or you had, a, you had a rough day or a hard time and didn't know how you were going to get through. Now, as a child of God, we're already forgiven and we fall upon the grace and we fall upon the rock and we're not crushed, man. So that, that goes a long way, man, as far as helping us make it through it. But, um, yeah, brother, I, I thank you for coming on the show, hanging out with me, man. And we, we, you know what I'm saying? We're finally able to make this happen before we go, man. I'm going to ask you just to say a prayer for those people that we've mentioned, man, those people who are looking for, um, a church body looking for accountability, like true accountability, discipleship. Cause I believe that people who truly desire discipleship, that they're going to find it. Um, and yeah. for those people who are in, in those churches and, and they just feel uncomfortable, man, just give them some hope, man. Say a prayer for those people, man. Just, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Just some hope, brother. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, in Jesus mighty name. First of all, Lord, I lift up um, the non-believers, Lord out there um, who have yet to be, had their faith awakened, Father God. Lord, I ask that you move upon them right now, Father God. They might have questions, Lord, and, and, and they might uh, have fears, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you be the answer to that question right now, Father. I pray that you that, that their spirit become awakened, Lord, and, and they be touched right now where they're at in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Lord, I pray that they would recognize that, that they are sinners and, and, and with, without Christ, they are hopeless in judgment. They will have to pay for their own sins, Father God. And who can stand before a righteous judge and have hope when he is guilty? So, Father God, first of all, Lord, I just ask that they would humble themselves, Lord, before you and recognize that, that they have committed sin against you, Father. And the penalty of that sin is eternal death, Lord, as it should be, because you are holy. And who are we to, de to deny you the right, the right, Lord God, that you have? to get from our lives what you deserve. Who are we to tell you that we're going to do whatever we want to do with the life that you gave us? The wickedness involved in that thought process, Father God, it blows my mind. And, and I didn't realize it when I was in it, Father God. And I'm sure there are people listening to this. They don't realize it. So I pray that you wake them up right now and they would humble themselves and they would repent, not just apologize, but they would make a conscious decision, Lord God, to turn from their wickedness and to follow you because you love them enough, Lord, to come and die on the cross for their sins. You shed blood. The forgiveness that you have for us, Lord, it, it wasn't cheap. It came at, at such a cost, Lord God. It cost you suffering. It, it cost you a, a reputation, Lord God. You, you, were, you were humiliated for us. You let your own creations humiliate you, Lord. We will never understand the level of love that it took to do what you did, Lord God. But Father, I just pray that, that we blinding their eyes be removed because you didn't stay dead, Lord. You demonstrated that you were everything that you said that you were when three days later you came out of that grave. And that tomb is empty to this day. And they can formulate whatever conspiracy theories they want, Father God. But it takes more faith to believe that nonsense than it does to really understand that you came out of that tomb with all power and you reigned. And you are God. And your name has power. And it does change. And me and my brother sitting right here having this conversation, we are just a couple of the evidences, Father God, of what you can do. So we lift them up to you, Lord. I also lift up my brothers and sisters who are out there, Lord, um, kind of like a ship with no sail right now, Father God. They, they do believe in you and they do desire to go deeper, but they just don't know where to go. Maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they've been lied to. Maybe they've been taught wrong. And, and by listening to this interview, they're realizing, yo, I'm not being taught right, Father. I pray that they would reach out. I pray that they'd reach out to my brother. 
that they would reach out to me. They can go to our website, hogmop.com, and send us an email, Lord God, and we will do our best to try to help them. But Lord, I pray that they really, truly want what they're asking for. Because true discipleship comes with a cost. True To be a true disciple, Lord, your word says we have to be willing to give up everything. Everything. And the first thing we have to be willing to give up is our way of doing things and our way of thinking of what's right and wrong. We have to be willing to surrender that before you, Lord God, and, and, and acknowledge you as Lord and, and, and sovereign authority over our life, Father God. And that's the hard part. Everybody loves the Savior. They hated him when he said he was Lord. So, Lord God, I just I lift my brothers and sisters up to you right now, Father God, and I pray that in these last days you would encourage them. You would send a spirit to minister to them, Lord. Send them, brothers and sisters, just like you did me. I was out here alone, Lord God, and I began to pray, Father God, send me some brothers. And you did. And you gave me the boldness to start discipling brothers around me. And now I have this family of fellowship, Lord God. But I had to work for it and I had to labor for it and I had to be willing to pour into people, Lord, in order to build this fellowship, Father God. It didn't come cheap. Nothing worth having does, Father God. So, Lord, I just lift these brothers and sisters up to you, Father. Um, And and, and I just pray, Lord, that that if anybody out there needs healing of their mind, of of their body, of their broken heart, Lord, I know all, all these things too well, Lord, but I also know what you can do in the heart of a person who truly stands before you broken and just ready to surrender, Father. And I pray that somebody right here and right now is doing that, Lord. I I lift my brother's uh, uh, show up to you, Father God. I just pray that he would continue to just keep it authentic to the gospel um, and that he would um, accurately reflect you, you, Father God, with this platform that he has. And he would be a good steward of it, Lord. And as he does that, Lord, I pray that you would advance it and, and, and give him the things that he needs, Father God. And I pray the same for our ministry, Amen. Lord. Protect us as we go out on this missions trip, Lord. Bring in the resources that we need, Father God, so we can do your will once again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother, I thank you, man. You guys have God a... Bless you. you know what I'm saying? You guys have, have a strong team, brother, with you. Um, Just before you go really quick, there's people who have no idea who you are. Um, tell them a little bit about what hog mob means. Hog mob is a acronym. It stands for being hooked on God and keeping ministry over business. H O G M O B. You can get a lot more information about us. Um, go to hogmob.com. Um, we got all kinds of information about the ministry, um, the different brothers involved, um, certain parts of the website. My boy is actually helping us with right now. They under construction, but, um, we definitely have a, a lot of information on there. We do right now. Um, I started a movement called pray for my hood where we actually go out and we target dangerous neighborhoods to receive the gospel and just to, um, you know, there's a lot of pain and a lot of hurting that needs to be healed. And so we go out and try to assist with that all over the country. So we're in the process right now of hitting about a hundred urban neighborhoods pretty soon. So, you know, we're obviously looking for support when it comes to that and stuff, but yeah, man, look us up. Uh, my name's seven S E V I N. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, a, a former low life, you know what I'm saying? From California, man, that, that, that Jesus Christ has changed and delivered, man. And, and, and I, I'm just here to bang Christ until the day I die, man. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know y'all, but I love y'all. God loves y'all. You feel me? And he put that love for you in me, man. So, you know, if y'all need anything, you know, whatever we can do, we will do. And if we can't do nothing, you know, we we, will try to direct you to somebody who can help you better than we can, but we try not to turn nobody away, you know, unless they on some nonsense and, you know, and this God bless you. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Straight up. All right, brother. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, man. We'll get up soon. For sure. Much love, bro. All right, brother. Peace. Peace. Mother. Seven of Hog Mob Ministries, guys. He's a good dude, man. Um, I built his website. Actually, I built all the the underground Christian rappers, the guys who are kind of taking the reins now. Pyrex, Seven, um, Illuminate, um, Hopebeat.net, which is a a big Christian marketing website for Christian hip-hop. And also... um, Dante's website and these are all guys who are all affiliated with with hog mob um and I'll say this man um I still do have a bad taste in my mouth for Christian rap for gospel rap 
I uh, don't really listen to too much of it anymore. I used to do gospel rap, and that's pretty much why, because I used to do it, and I've seen the good, the bad, and, and the ugly, and um, I've seen the cliches, and I've seen, um, I've seen way too much uh, in these churches and stuff like that. So when it comes to the Christian rap, a lot of it's corny, a lot of it's unoriginal. They try to repeat rappers that they hear on the radio. So if Lil Wayne's popular, you're gonna hear these rappers coming out sounding like Lil Wayne, Drake comes out with these little dances where he puts his hand on his hip and does these little dances. And so now all the Christian rappers are doing it, dancing up in the churches on stage. And I, it's just, ugh, it's nasty, man. I, I've seen it. I've seen it hand first. But when it comes to seven and it comes to hog mob, these dudes are legit. Like this dude does it with a passion, does it full time. Um, he's a real dude, real dude. Um, he, he, you know what I'm saying? He'll tell you like it is. I've dealt with too many Christians in general, but definitely Christian rappers who um, they have to be politically correct, even not not in the, the social mainstream, but in the church realm. And those, so there's things that you say and there's things that you do in any click that's re, that, that gets you received. And, you know, you're cool as long as you, you have the lingo and we call it Christianese. They speak with Christianese. And most people who are outside of church culture will have no idea what the hell people are talking about speaking Christianese. You know what I'm saying? Um, and seven's a real dude. You're not you're not really going to get that from him, even though we're, we're, we're talking about ministry. We're talking about the, the, the good, the bad and the ugly for what it is. I think people need to hear that. People need to be encouraged. You know what I'm saying? not to give up and not to feel like they're alone in the end. Um, but seven, his music, um, they don't, he, he, they, they don't get a lot of love um, from the, the Christian community. I think they're starting to now more, like I said earlier on, because some people are kind of moved out the way. Some of the big mainstreamer Christian rappers, Lecrae and those guys are kind of moved out the way. So now, Hog Mob, Bizzle, you know, these guys are now kind of getting more of the limelight. And so they're, you know, their their name, um, you know, brings numbers. So these these other people are wanting to have them on. So that's one thing that's going on. But Seven, Illuminate, Pyrex, um, these are all genuine dudes. Brian T, uh, I do enjoy listening to their music. Um, it, it is original. It hasn't changed with the times. Like they, they, they don't do trap rap. They don't do uh, mumble rap. You know what I'm saying? They haven't changed because mumble rap's popular now. They do the old school, 90s influenced, old school, but yet with the, like the beats and stuff are still current and up to date. So I do like their music, um, but more since I know him as a person, it makes it gives me the story behind the music, you know. Um, and just because I've seen that in the in the Christian realm, like I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Same thing has happened in in my arena now with with like the spiritual hip hop. Uh, you know, I still I still take uh, Christian terms and and uh, Christian, um, you know, what I'm saying ideologies, and, and I put them in my music and and use metaphors and change the names and stuff like that. But it is hidden deep within my music as well. But in, in the spiritual arena, it's kind of been the same thing. I, I've met some of the people that I've looked up to um, and had had interactions with these people, and it put a bad taste in my mouth as well. There's people whose music, man, was, like, phenomenal and still is as far as the music goes, but I met the people behind it, and their life does not reflect the music at all. Like, their life does not reflect that music about meditation, prayer, elevation, um, ascension, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the stuff they, they rap about in their music because they've studied it, but they don't live it. And they're they're just regular street dudes. And that's put a, a bad taste in my mouth um, from the spiritual hip-hop community. And, you know, I think they tell you, like, that you shouldn't want to meet the, uh, the people that you look up to, your idols. You shouldn't meet your idols because a lot of times you're let down because you look up to these people. You're like, oh, man. And you're looking for this this experience with them when, when, whenever you meet them and you hold these guys on, on these pedestals and you're like, man, these are just regular dudes from the hood. That's what I felt out with, uh, with uh, the spiritual hip hop community as well. And I think that's what was key about what Seven said at the beginning is like, 
he don't want to have you know he because he he knows his flaws and he knows that he's he's a um you know what i'm saying he's still under construction right and we tend to look up to people and put them on these platforms and they, we think that they're more spiritual than you know what i'm saying than they really are i i get that and when people meet me um you know they're you know they expect me to only talk about spiritual stuff and i don't even talk about this stuff in public anymore with people uh, for real i only do this stuff on podcasts and in music i don't go to places and, and try to engage people about spirituality like um but if people want to talk about it i'm totally down totally down when it comes to that but people put you on a, a pedestal and they um you know they, they they've created an idol in their mind of, of of who you are and it's not real it's an image that's what that's what idols are idolatry and so i've had to i've had to feel the uh the good bad and the the ugly and all the, the pushback from that you know with showing you know what i'm saying some showing who i am and not being afraid of that because i we are spiritual beings i'm into spirituality i'm also into a lot of other stuff too um so that whole dichotomy for me was really big and trying and just trying to get over that of just being okay with the public seeing me. And that's why, you know, th th this podcast was called the Mythicist podcast. It was called Encountering God podcast. But essentially, I didn't want I didn't want to call it the True Seeker podcast because I didn't want to put too much of who I was out there. But I was like, you know what, I need, I'm not going to try to keep branding all kind of other names and stuff. What you see is what you get. And just like we were saying, you have those friends who are just down the ride, man. Those fans who are just like, like, yeah, we like the music, but we like you as a person. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're fans of the music. Um, and even Grimm's in the chat room. And I'm probably going to hit Grimm up when I get off of here to, to get into some gaming, man. You know, me and my wife, you know what I'm saying? And my daughter, we all, we, we all are big into gaming. And I remember showing that side and doing some live streaming gaming. And guys, man, the hatred I got from some of my fans when I was live streaming gaming, they're like, turn the games off and work on music. We're ready for new music, True Seeker. Turn the damn games off. And it's like, oh, wow. And it was a lot of people. Oh, these games aren't spiritual. They rot your brain. Oh, the games are put here by the Illuminati to keep you. And just all this crazy stuff. I'm like, man, you guys had this crazy uh, picture of me of something like I'm meditating all day and stuff, um, which I, I do. I do meditate. I, I need that stuff. So all of that's a part of me. And uh, and I'm not I'm not afraid to, you know, what I'm saying to be myself and just finally be comfortable in my own skin and just to be public with that. You know what I'm saying? So. That's uh, that's a whole lot of. I'm reading the comments now. You guys are awesome. Hey Chanel, Grim, I and I. What's up, brother? Oh man, so that yeah, that's it. Oh man, I'm glad I seen your comments. So he says huge hog mob. So I have a confession to make, man. About seven, and about about you, James, um, and a lot of other people who are fans of of True Seeker now for some reason. And fans of Hog Mob. And for some of you guys, there's a reason. And James, this is definitely my confession. And I think I might have even told you this. I'm not, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you never heard this. But okay. So I had a page. I, I had on, on our Facebook, I had my True Seeker fan page, right? And it's where people who like my music, they go like the fan page. And I had about 8,000 likes at the time. And then I had, had 5,000 likes on my I mean, 5,000 friends on my regular page. And on my regular page, I was friends with Seven. I was friends with all these uh, rappers and, and band and, uh, you know, people who are in bands and stuff. I was uh, Tommy Green from um, Sleeping Giant, Sonny Sandoval from P.O.D., Maddie Montgomery. These were some of the bigger names of people who early on, on when they first got on Facebook, I became friends with them and we'd have conversations and they'd, they'd answer me back and we kind of built relationships like that. Well, I was friends with seven as well. And so I wanted to get rid of my page because it was like a straight Christian following it because I was doing gospel rap. And once I started to, to kind of stray away from that, I was like, you know what, let me delete this page. But instead of deleting it, Facebook has a feature where you can take your regular page and merge it 
to your fan page. So I went through that process and I did that. So it combined all of my regular friends, 5,000 friends, and, and it showed that they liked True Seeker and it gave me 5,000 uh, li more likes on the True Seeker page. And when I did that, if you was to go to Maddie Montgomery, Sonny Sandoval, Seven, if you go to their page in the bottom left corner where it says bands that they like or, or, or artists that they like, it all said that they liked True Seeker. So instead of them being a fan, a, a friend of me, they turned into being a fan on on Facebook. And I got a lot of messages. And James, you're in the chat. Um, you messaged me because of that. You told me that you seen me. I didn't know who you were. You was a huge Seven fan. And you've seen that Seven liked True Seeker. Seven listened to True Seeker. And so you hit me up. You check me out. And then I'm spitting all this esoteric stuff, all of this spiritual stuff. And essentially, I've seen you start to get into it. Like you, were, you would call me and we'd have conversations and you'd pick my brain about geometry, about vibration, about the Bible and, and where this stuff is in the Bible and things like that. And we'd have phone conversations and I've seen you morph into where like you're very well studied on your spirituality now and how it pertains to your life. And it, it uh, helps you, man. So that was one thing about the seven stuff. I had a bunch of seven fans hit me up cause they're like, Oh, seven listens to this guy. Let me check him out. And so I guess that's a confession. I should have told Seven I wanted to, but we, we kind of went in a different direction. So maybe he'll go back and listen to this or I'll give the chance to talk to him again. But I, I thought that was funny, man. There was a lot of people who hit me up, fans of P.O.D. And they're like, yeah, man, I, I, see, I see P.O.D. listens to True Seeker. Let me check this guy out. So people who actually had a chance to listen to my music and they became, became fans. But that's how. Because they found out that their favorite rapper or their favorite band listened to True Seeker, which they really didn't, right? Because I combined the pages and it showed that I did. I thought that's a funny little story. And, and James Harkness, that's why you're here, man. You know, and I thought that's just a funny story, man. Um, every, everything works together for a reason, though, man. God knows what he's doing. I didn't know that was going to happen when I, when I did that, but it's pretty funny. So now... Um, we're going to wrap the show up. All of you guys who have been listening, I, I thank all of you. Make sure that you guys, because everybody right now, we got a bunch of people listening on, on, on YouTube right now. Make sure you go to iTunes or your uh, Android podcasting app and um, download the, the app and, and subscribe to the True Seeker podcast that way. Um, that's the like the real way that we're trying to push it is through the podcasting apps. And, um, and so... Do that for me. Make sure you subscribe there if you're listening on YouTube or whatever. And also, if you found this episode valuable and you think that somebody can benefit from it, whether it was the prayer at the end or some of the stuff we're just talking about church culture and some of the the different enigmas that go on there and some of the stuff we don't understand and just really what church is like in general, like we've got a crazy misconception of what church is, man, for real. Um. Make sure you share it, man. Just share, just share it out with, with people who, uh, who you think can actually benefit from this episode. And so I've been staying busy with this stuff, man, putting out a lot of episodes. I think I may, I think I may do another episode tomorrow, just doing another uh, solo episode, doing a breakdown on song lyrics and just going into um, the meaning behind some of the cryptic messages that is throughout true stick of music. So if you guys have a song that you want to hear me break down, like some lyrics that, that intrigue you the most, send me a message, send me an email. Uh, you can get in contact with me on all social media outlets. Um, let me know what song you want me to break down. Cause I got a bunch of them and uh, I may move it to the front of the list. So I'm going to do that. Um, I just, I did that for the first time. I was kind of nervous to see if I can hold attention for, you know, a full song. I didn't know how long it was going to take. I talked for an hour and 45 minutes by myself. And I was so parched at the end of, end of that episode. And, uh, but I think it went really well, man. There's a, cause I was talking to a guy today, a friend of mine, 
And he's, he said, yeah, man, we get, I get messages from people and they say, yeah, man, I, I love your music, but true seeker, man, I, I, I love his, his flow. I love his rhyme scheme and stuff, but I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. What is he, what does he mean when he's talking about the Kundalini and, uh, you know what I'm saying? The spiritual ecstatic experiences and, um, uh, you know what I'm saying? Vibration from the force, feeling my mind and my body divorce. You know what I'm saying? What does he mean by that stuff? And so people, even Jamie Ruckman, he's commenting right now in, in the chat room. Jamie Ruckman's like, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. Jamie's like, dude, I love your music. It's awesome. You rap fast. I really love the rhyming schemes. But I have no idea what you're talking about. So that's what's cool about doing the, the, the actual breakdowns so that I can, uh, I can kind of give you the meanings of, of some of the things and kind of turn it into a teaching because some of those phrases and stuff are brand new for a lot of people. They've never heard of some of that stuff. I mentioned the Book of Enoch, something that is very um, elementary to me, like in, in, in my awakening, like that book came with it. Um, so I'll go into detail about the Book of Enoch and maybe it'll uh, pique your interest to actually pick that book up and read or uh, the secret teachings of all ages, Manly P. Hall, and 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 just tell you what the song titles, the phrases, what they mean to me, how I came up with them, and my meanings behind them. Like I said, it's also beautiful that people listen and they come up with their own um, ideas about what I'm talking about or what the song means to them. That's beautiful as well. But for me to actually sit down and break the lyrics down, man, it just paints a whole new picture and basically turns into a freaking sermon or something, right? Just breaking down all of this. Cause I cram so much in, into the music and like bar for bar, line for line. I may be talking about meeting an angel um, that was made of golden light in the next bar. I'm talking about uh, mystical experiences like Joe Rogan, you know, who is Joe Rogan? You know, how does he have mystical experiences and how does it relate to true seeker? Right. So I kind of go into detail about all that stuff. So if there is a song you want to hear me break down, let me know. I'll push you to the front of the list. <laughs> Jamie Ruckman's commenting in the, in the chat room. He says, he's laughing. He says, mushrooms, LOL. That's a scary thought in my head. <laughs> it, hey, man, this should be a healthy fear of mushrooms, man. It should be a healthy fear of mushrooms and, and respect them. For anybody, I, I do not recommend doing mushrooms as a as a, a party drug or at a party. Uh, I, I respect them. It's a sacrament and uh, very special to me, very near and dear to me. And uh, that's what the Golden Teachers, the song Golden Teachers essentially is about. And um, actually, speaking of Golden Teachers, I've just released my T-shirts again. I found somebody who can print t-shirts up for a decent price and you can go to truthseeker.com and I just put the golden teachers up before the, we went live. So I got a, a t-shirt with a, an angelic being that I think depicts the golden teachers, man. And it says golden teachers. So uh, check it out. Okay. Grim says he has a giant one right here. <laughs> you have a giant golden teacher right there in front of you. That's what's up, man. Get in there, man. See what the uh, universe has to teach you, man. I believe those. I believe those golden teachers, man, are angelic beings, dude. I really do. And uh, it's a when when you go into those realms with the golden teachers, with the the, the psilocybin sacrament, man, you're you're being led by a consciousness, um, an angelic force that that communicates with you, and uh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's not demonic. It's not. It is scary because it's a new place, right? You go to a new place, you, you don't really know how things operate and the laws change there. The laws of physics actually change there too and what you know what is real and stuff. But there, there's a consciousness there communicating with you, letting you know that everything's okay. I got you. And I got a couple of things I want to show you. And uh, that's when things changed for me. That's when all my music became real to me. Like, Man, and I've talked about it before, and I'll probably talk about it when I break down this Golden Teacher song, and I may do that tomorrow. But that's when that stuff became real to me. Is like, because I've rapped about seeing heaven, and I've I like rapped about all of my spiritual encounters up to heaven, psilocybin um, sacrament, and they're all beautiful. They're about traveling to heaven, 
looking at gazing into heaven, uh, the gates of Orion, uh, look, peering into e- eternity, things like this. And these are these are things that I've done, man. Beautiful encounters that I've had that I've tried to uh, poetically recreate them for the listener, right? And to kind of almost set it like a monument, you know, in in, in the scriptures when the uh, Israelites uh, achieved a victory or something happened, something monumental happened, they made a monument. They took rocks and and built a little structure out of rocks. And so every time that they came to that place, they would be reminded of that victory or that promise of from God every time they seen that monument and they would have them everywhere, man. And so um, the psilocybin was monumental for me and my, and my, my, my music. And um, it's just, it's, it's, it's living in my music. Like those encounters are living in my music now. So when I listen to it, I'm taken back. There are songs that I will not listen to unless I'm ready to be taken back right now. And I've talked about this on Kelly and the Ross. He's Chanel's listening. Um, you know, the song Good For Me by um, um, Above and Beyond. Like that song triggers. We like that word now, right? Triggered. But listening to that song, man, and, and all my friends who've been with me, when they hear that song, they just immediately taken back to that realm and taken back to that, that, that point in time where, where we encountered the golden teachers. So I'll probably be talking about this tomorrow and try to go into more detail about those lyrics and, and my encounters and uh, looking, it's about that time. That's all I'm going to say. It's about that time for another one. So it's time for a reset button. You know, it's awesome that, that we have that button. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments here. I know it's not good for audio, but um, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me, listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to try to edit this out a little bit for the the podcast version because there was some internet uh, uh, blips there on his end. But thank you guys. And if you want to support what I'm doing and you want to get new music, I'm telling you guys, I got new music on the Patreon. And a lot of you guys who are in the chat room right now, you guys are members over there and you guys are helping me support uh my my music addiction and so c- creating new music and um i got like three other new songs that i'm about to put up they're in the works we're trying to finish them up um those and so w- what's going on over there is that as soon as i finish a song i'm, I'm steadily working on music as soon as i finish a song that it's like you know what okay that's gonna go on the album i'll upload it to patreon And that's only for the hardcore supporters. Like I say hardcore, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Anywhere from a dollar to like $10, $25 a month. Um, But you you guys get first dibs over there. And and there's stuff that's uploaded there that's going to be there months before it's going to appear on the album. So for those of you guys who are inboxing me and begging me for new music and you want to hear new music, patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There's like seven songs up there. I'm about to put three more up. There's some, some of Watchmen's music leaked over there that we're about to get ready to release. Um, so yeah, that helps me so much with paying these bills and keeping, uh, the internet on at my house and paying for all this beautiful equipment, this microphone, uh, the storage on Lipson to actually be on iTunes and things like that. It costs money to do that stuff. And, uh, Patreon is the perfect model for you guys to help support independent artists and independent podcasters, man. There's, um, you know, there's a lot of work ahead that that we want to do and we're working hard, man. A lot of sleepless nights go into this stuff. So I thank each and every one of you guys for um, supporting me over there. So go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker, sign up to support for any amount that you want to give per month and you will get perks and rewards and get exclusive content. So with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Shalom. I really enjoyed this episode um, and I'll be doing it again tomorrow. We got some awesome shows. If you guys haven't looked through the back, catalog you got to go look man i just interviewed margaret marguerite perrin the god warrior from abc's trading spouses like come on man you guys got to go back and listen to some of these shows man mary rodwell and it's an eclectic group of people here guys and it's so awesome that you guys rock with me because i do get those messages man even on patreon i get those messages where people and you probably listen now i'm not going to say your name but I, i get messages from people who say, you know what, I can't support this anymore. Uh, that lady who you had on, um, 
talking about aliens and all this. I can't support it. I'm going to, I'm done. I can only support Christian stuff. And it's like, well, we're about to interview seven from hog mob. So it's a, it's an eclectic, uh, eclectic group of people that we have on here. And part of it is just being me. I'm a little bit of all of it. You're going to get a little bit of, you're going to get the aliens. You're going to get Jesus. You're going to get, um, ascended masters. You're going to get Kundalini awakening. You're going to get spirituality. You're going to get music. You're going to get all of it on here, man. So if you guys are still listening at this point there, I think, I think, I think I hit a nerve. There's something there that you guys like. And so we have a common interest here. And, it, it, and it, even if it's just even like for you, Chanel, just wanting to get to the bottom of spirituality and who's telling the truth and who's making this shit up as they go along. Right. Who's making this shit up? And they're, and, and they're doing it in, in every single uh, facet. The, there's people in the Christian circles who are in, in the spiritual Christian circles who are making it up as they go in the new age circles and the, in the UFO ufology circles. There's people making it up. And um, that that's one thing that I want to I want to be true to that. Everything I put in my music, everything that I talk about, uh, whether it sounds more poetic or it sounds more interesting than it really was. There's a lot of that. You know, some of that stuff sounds way more interesting. I take something as simple as prayer and make it sound so deep and esoteric and, and spiritual when it really is. It's powerful. Prayer is powerful. Meditation, sitting in silence is super powerful. But I'll take something so simple and make it sound so beautiful and so intricate. And then I'll take something so intricate and something so far out there and make it sound so nonchalant. Like it's just everyday we do it every day, you know, and that's part of the art form and the music and what I've kind of built my albums around my aesthetic experiences and just making it plain. So I love each and every one of you guys. And um, we're all part of a family. And um, I know you guys see yourself in my story. And just as I see myself in you guys, um, even the guests I interview, like, I truly believe that what I've taken to biblically is uh, the Apostle Paul says that I have come, I've become all things to all men so that I might win some. And I'll rock with anybody, man. And I get, I get judged. I get, I get um, persecuted. But it's, it's nothing. The, the joy is so much more um, worth it than the, the persecution or the, the backlash. So, um, Thanks for rocking with me, guys. Just going to let you guys know what it means to me. So you guys are awesome. Cheer up. I love y'all. See you next time. Peace.